Welcome back to another SOLIDWORKS uh, tutorial series. In this video, we are going to cover intermediary sketching tools. And you do realize that in the previous video, we only cover basic uh, sketching tools and uh, commands. So go ahead and uh, open uh, SOLIDWORKS. Uh, click new. Under new, you click uh, part. Then uh, you will be you will uh, be having this uh, part environment. Uh, select uh, front plane. Uh, once uh, you are in this part environment and you have confirmed you are working in the correct units, uh, go ahead and select uh, polygon command. Uh, polygon command. You can see the property manager there is showing us the number of sides uh, we have selected. But uh, this one you can change later. Also, you realize uh, our circle is uh, circumsc circumscribed. Uh, you can change that to inscribed circle. Also, you can change the sides to eight uh, sided. Uh, that one is called uh, eight sided is called uh, hectagon. Uh, you can as well check this as a construction, but uh, we'll leave that unchecked for now. Close the property manager. Here you can go ahead and add uh, some relations. Uh, you can even add uh, smart uh, dimensioning. Uh, also, you can add uh, some uh, relations like uh, vertical or, uh, or horizontal there. And you can see if you do that, uh, it is now fully defined. Our next uh, intermediary sketching tool is going to be slot. And we have uh, like uh, four different types of slot. Uh, we have uh, this first one, uh, like uh, center. Then uh, you go to the width there. And you do realize we have a checkbox for adding uh, dimensioning. If you uncheck that, then uh, if you draw the slot, then uh, the dimensioning won't be added automatically. Uh, you can also pay attention on the graphics on the numbers there. On the numbers there, they, it's just guiding you on the formula. Always on uh, how you draw the slots there. From 1 to the now uh, and so on. Uh, you can uh, draw the fourth one. Uh, this uh, these slots do have different application depending on the type of sketch you are having. Uh, they will be applicable later in this uh, in this tutorial series. Uh, the next uh, command will uh, I will love us to talk uh, to talk about is a uh, fillet uh, command. And uh, you can just post the video to draw this figure faster. Then uh, you add the dimensioning. So under fillet command, uh, you can see we have that property manager. And please, uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. And because uh, uh, that is the kind of way of, uh, of uh, supporting this channel. So we do have uh, options of uh, fillet command. Uh, you can check the box for keep constant corners. If you do check this box, means that uh, once you add the fillets, the dimensionings won't uh, won't be interfered with. And you can see now we have uh, some relations added. When uh, when you do add the fillet, we have the constraint for tangent added automatically. And since the the radiuses are equal. Uh, you can see also equal uh, relation is also added automatically. Uh, you can also have the option of uh, having a fillet ready of uh, different uh, dimension. For example, if I check the box for dimension each fillet, then uh, I click uh, that vertex. Then I have the option of uh, changing this value to let's say 10, 10 millimeters, then click OK. Then while I'm um, still the same property manager, I can select another vertex and uh, I had a dimensioning of 20. 
then uh, just click outside uh, outside the the window there or I, I confirm with that blue tick there to, to add the fillet a last layer can also have the fillet on the on the fourth corner there and uh, this time around I love to have a fillet of red radius of, of five millimeters uh, so fillets do also come in handy when you don't want to have sharp uh, sharp edges in your in your sketches uh, please go ahead and uh, close that uh, the next uh, the next command is going to be almost uh, under the fillet command and that is called uh, sketch chamfer a uh, sketch chamfer is, uh, is also having different properties if you check the property manager there we have the option of distance to distance and if the equal uh, equal distance is checked then you can see we have uh, a fill a uh, chamfer of 10 and you can see that uh, small ring that's just showing that uh, if you change one then the other one will up update automatically uh, that is what that uh, ring means the red ring there means that uh, the two distances are, um, are related we can have another option whereby mm. we check the angle distance but before that uh, let's uncheck the equal distance and let's say we have uh, now we'll have distance one and distance two a distance one is going to be the first line selected then distance two is now going to be the second line selected for example our distance one was 15 and distance two was 10 and you do also have the option to undo in case you realize uh, is not going to fit well within your within your sketches uh, the last bit is angle uh, distance angle distance uh, just uh, you you need to add distance one uh, you add a value then also you have uh, an angle let's say an angle of 60 and let's apply it uh, down here and you can see how that is uh, now how that is applied so this this these uh, sketches do come in handy the next uh, intermediate sketch we'll have to we want to cover is uh, trim entities. Uh, under trim entities, we do have a number of options. We do have power trim. Under power trim, uh, we have uh, it just trim up to the next uh, sketch or vertex there. But now for it to work, we have to press and hold the left mouse. And you drag it around uh, the area where you want to the lines to be trimmed we do have also corner trim and please do pay attention to the graphic there it shows you how, how the corner trim works you can if you select the two lines like that then uh, it trims whatever is uh, is outside that corner another option uh, we do have here is uh, Mm, trim trim to the inside so here you'll select two lines and whatever is inside or in between these two lines uh, is uh, is uh, is trimmed out uh, so you can undo that then we move to the next one so this next one is just the opposite of the previous one instead of trimming inside now it trims outside of that uh, of those two lines there like that so under let's undo that undo that then uh, the last bit here is uh, my favorite uh, trimming uh, tool uh, which is just uh, trim to the closest so this this trims it to the closest uh, profile or to the closest entity like that uh, so it is easier to use you notice that uh, under below those uh, 
trimming uh, options we do have two unchecked uh, boxes uh, we can check those one of the boxes and see one of the boxes is saying that keep trimmed entities as a as a construction geometry so this one helps you instead of doing away with the line you convert it as a construction geometry so that uh, you don't lose the relations uh, which were added automatically on the line uh, so the next box uh, also uh, the next box is also saying that uh, ignore trimming of uh, construction geometry so uh, this one uh, in case you have a uh, construction geometry already existing in your sketch uh, sketch profiles then they won't be trimmed out if that box is uh, is checked so those two boxes uh, do apply independently and you can use them in different uh, in different uh, scenarios when you are doing your your sketches in solidworks uh, please also if you do have questions uh, regarding some of these uh, commands please let me know in the comment section and uh, i will respond to them uh, as required uh, the next tool is under which is also under trimmed entities we do have extend entities this one is is easier it on, it works like uh, it just extend the line to the to the next profile uh, available uh, so this one you can use uh, to join to complete the lines there when when you're doing your sketches so here we're going to do offset entities and you can see i have a couple of options in the property manager where i can add a dimension i can reverse the direction i can select the chain by directional i can add the caps also i can make them geometry or construction line so here now let's say we have the line there like that the dimensioning is added because the box was checked also if i have a curve like that i can decide to add the end caps uh, and for them to be the arcs and if i check that box for by directional and also here i can decide to make the base geometry to as a construction line or as a construction geometry and you can see this also another way you can draw a slot uh, instead of the other way around which we covered uh, uh, in some minutes earlier in this uh, in this tutorial uh, also if you check the circle there you can have now the option of uh, instead of having the base geometry as a construction you can have the offsets uh, being converted as a as a construction geometry the next bit uh, we want to talk about is uh, is having this chain selection so you can go ahead and uncheck uh, these boxes so that you can see how the chain selection works so chain selection works uh, when you have a, a comp or a closed uh, a closed uh, sketch for example this one instead of having to select each line independently you can just select check that box of chain selection and now you can add a dimension of let's say five and the whole uh, the whole geometry will be will be selected or the whole sketch will be selected like that and you can cover you can have the other one as a construction geometry so here we do want to also to cover the convert entities i uh, don't worry about the the solid uh, bit of it that one will cover in uh, under features uh, of solidworks so converting entities uh, we will have to have a plane so once you have a plane then just select the entities you wish to convert then uh, just click uh, convert entities 
this one do saves you time having to draw the same sketch uh, again and again you just have to offset a plane then you select the entities you wish to convert uh, on the next plane there so this do comes in handy and we'll cover this uh, this solid uh, bit of it in uh, in the next uh, tutorial where we'll be covering features of uh, features which are presented in uh, in SolidWorks. So the next uh, intermediary command is mirror mirror entities, and uh, mirror entities we do have to have the entities to mirror, and also you have to mirror them about a given line. For example. If you click mirror entities, you will be prompted to enter the entities you will wish to mirror. Then you will mirror them about a certain point or a certain line. For example, this one we have mirror, uh, we've mirror about the center line there. So after mirroring, the entities uh, can be can be changed respectively and uh, the change uh, will be reflected on the on the mirror line or about the mirror line uh, also if you're keen you can see some of the relations have been added those are just uh, symmetry to show that uh, whatever is on the other side can be converted to the other side you also do have the option to mirror about an angle I say that uh, we draw the line at an angle like that and make it a construction line so if you click mirror entities and uh, here we do crossing box selection then mirror about this uh, line at an angle you can see we'll have the entities mirror about that uh, that line at an angle and the symmetry relation is also added at, uh, around that line. So that's how you do mirror in uh, in SolidWorks like that. The next uh, the next entities I will wish to cover is a uh, linear pattern. And uh, after you have drawn this uh, small rectangle, then uh, just click linear pattern, and you can see already. Uh, entities to pattern have, has already been selected uh, sometimes you'll have to enter them manually so under direction one let's say we have entities of to pattern to be six and uh, you can see then uh, under direction it is grayed out because uh, currently entities to pattern is one but if you change this to let's say six will have these options uh, showing here so just check uh, these boxes these boxes will allow you to do changes on the screen other than coming to the property manager uh, design tree here so the last option here we do have uh, an option of uh, skipping some of these entities once you check it you will see these uh, this uh, magenta color appearing just click that uh, color and uh, the entities to skip will uh, will be will be deleted to add them back just click uh, the magenta color again and they will reappear so that's how linear pattern work and you can see now what i was saying that we now have the freedom to make changes on the screen here so the next uh, uh, pattern uh, which is uh, which is also comes in handy here is called circular pattern uh, circular pattern uh, also you will have a uh, property manager here which uh, you will need to feed some values and uh, here also we will have to enter the the patterns or the entities to pattern you can enter them manually like that then uh, we have the instances is currently currently at four you can change that one to let's say 20 20 instances 
then uh, angle is there going through to 360 then uh, you can have uh, equal uh, equal spacing uh, checked so that uh, they are patterned equally so here also we do have uh, instances we can skip just the same as uh, linear pattern you can see the magenta color is appearing again you just click it to select uh, the profile that we love to skip so these are our circular pattern work the next uh, sketch uh, command here is uh, we have move command copy scale and all that so once you have this figure here just select uh, everything using window selection uh, once you select everything you can uncheck keep relation because uh, we want to move uh, this this uh, this profile uh, you, you can see under we have move from to and also we can have a radio box of x and y so let's undo this to see how x and y also works just uh, click move entities then now check this radio box so radio button of uh, x and y like uh, that then here you will have to like enter some values and this is most uh, more accurate than uh, moving it from to and this is how it works you have to feed in the values in x direction and also in y in y directions the second uh, part is copy entities since i had them already selected i can uh, start with the from and to and you can see now i have a similar copy of the same that is the difference between move entities and copy entities copy entities will uh, will leave the original at a specific location next we do have a uh, uh, rotate entity since I had them already selected and I can uh, select the point of rotation then angle is at 60 degrees go ahead and undo that then uh, we do have uh, another option of uh, scalar entities and I can just select that uh, point of uh, of, uh, of scaling or a scaling point then i can have the scale factor of two and if you do want a uh, copy then uh, you can increase maybe the number of copies you will wish and you can see each copy is uh, is uh, increased by a scale factor of two like that so that's how scalar uh, entities work the last one is uh, stretch uh, stretch entities and here we we'll love to explain one thing so uh here you'll we'll have to use a uh, crossing box selection if you use a window selection then uh, you won't be able to select the lines which you will wish to contribute in stretching this uh, entity like if you use a window selection you can see now we have selected uh, three lines and these three lines are the ones which will be now be using to stretch this uh, this uh, sketch towards the, the right like that so that's how sketch uh, stretch entity works sorry about that that's how stretch entity work you'll have to use a window selection here i want to explain something on the text tool but uh, i'll have to have uh, a solid uh, existing body that's why i have that body there so under property manager i have a space where i can type uh, anything i want let's say we have um, elvis creatives uh, elvis creatives uh, you can see now the orientation is not what i wanted so you can always direct uh, the text uh, whatever you type using uh, a line uh, command or uh, or curves like that so that's why the that uh, curve section is uh, is there 
to help you orient the text in a proper manner. Uh, but also you can see I can't really, I don't have the option of changing the, the size. So come and, and check this use document font. This will give you freedom to choose your own font uh, from this uh, floating window here. Let's say I can choose a Calibri font, font type. Then I can also change the font size here. Let's say we have, uh, let's say we have 10, uh, 10, uh, press OK and see how that one appears. It still looks small, uh, but uh, let's say we have uh, like 20, yeah, 20, 20 looks okay. 20 looks okay, but uh, I can see it moved uh, the other side. I can just uh, move it back a little bit. And no, yeah, like that. So this one looks okay. Can go and uh, confirm that or close that property manager. Then I can select the text so that uh, to extrude cut. Uh, this one will just uh, make the text uh, looks better on this surface and uh, also just to make it look uh, more presentable and uh, more visible from far. Some might say to make it look uh, um, more sexy. So the text looks okay and you can see how that one appear. And uh, before we conclude uh, this, uh, this tutorial uh, series or video, I wanted to explain something on uh, sketches. F for most of the beginners, you might find overlapping uh, lines on a sketch or you might find uh, gaps within a sketch. Uh, for that reason, uh, SolidWorks uh, came up with a uh, with a tool which can be used to repair the sketches and it is called repair sketch uh, command so once you click this uh, then uh, overlapping lines will be automatically corrected as you can see and also we have a floating window whereby you can use to check gaps within your within your sketches so you can type uh, check gaps uh, smaller than a certain value and you will have them highlighted like this and they are also zoomed uh, magnified so that you can see the, the how the gap uh, is so here now you can go ahead and uh, make it uh, coincident to the existing geometry or you can just join them manually like uh, like that and then you can now delete uh, the exist the excess uh, line uh, line geometry uh, so also we do have uh, three conventional uh, planes where you usually do do your sketching on but uh, if you do have an existing body you can as also do sketches on those uh, faces you don't have to use the uh, convectional uh, three planes uh, provided in SOLIDWORKS like this. You just select the face, then you can add uh, the sketches uh, as you might require. But uh, sometimes this might be time consuming and uh, because you have to select a face then go back, then select a face again. So that's why SOLIDWORKS came up with uh, another tool here called uh, rapid sketching and uh, rapid sketching it will just help you to save on time and uh, you don't have to select uh, the faces every now and then once you select a uh, command then uh, you can just draw any on any face there and please do remember to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials uh, like this and you do, if you do have a question please let me know in the comments uh, comment section and rapid sketching do not only apply to circles; it uh, it can draw any shape you you want. 
and remember each sketch is uh, independent and uh, you can uh, you can even do extrusion uh, on one of the sketches and you can see how how it works uh, thanks for watching and uh, please if you do have a question any concern any comment please let me know in the comment section thank you for watching bye